let's raise our glass and let's talk about all of our gadgets and gizmos. And so Dr. Calder, oh, oh you're muted still. Here we go. Just got to push a little button. There we go. There, there we, we go. go. Don't mute yourself. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, let's raise our glass and let's start with the toast, my friend. Oh, me? I'm doing the yes. toast? <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> to uh, everyone's health and uh, and hopefully spring is on its way. And I'm very happy to see you all tonight. I am not good with toasts. <laughs> well, and I'll say to all your gadgets, gadgets and gizmos. There you go. Cheers. There we go. I like it. <laughs> okay, so let's start with this because there's a purpose for everything that we purchase. And it has something to do with this thing called enrichment. So can we at least define that? I actually hear it's a really big buzzword right now. You hear it everywhere yes. when you're talking to your medical teams, et cetera. They're always throwing out this word enrichment. So can you mm -hmm. explain what that actually means? So enrichment is giving an animal the opportunity to do behaviors that are very species that are species specific so that we can improve their overall welfare um, and really help them to feel more comfortable in the environment in which they are in. So how is that different from just meeting their needs? I guess I don't under, you know. So sometimes, uh, so it's a little different than meeting their needs because we're working on, we've got different types of enrichment. So we have, you know, enrichment items that help with cognition, you know, problem solving. We've got items that will um, work on their senses, so their sensory system. So things like, you know, nose work or certain smells, certain sounds uh, that can really help to enrich that animal's environment um, and their life so that it reduces their overall stress level. Okay, you just freaked me out. I've never heard the term nose work. Oh, no. What does that mean? Uh, that's just, you know, you can have them go and look for a certain sense or smells. So very those similar to like those dogs dogs that are like, uh, you know, like the, the drug dogs or the, those types of dogs too. Okay. Correct. Correct. Except we do different kinds. So like hiding things like, uh, you can use things like peppermint and chamomile. You can also use more exotic smells, like anything that you can get off of the shelves at like Cabela's or Bass Pro Shop that have, you know, unique hunting scents to them, you know, um, fox urine, which smells really bad. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't recommend that in the house, but you know, that can be something that's very enriching for some dogs. You hide it around in the yard, they go sniffing around, you know, sniffing will help them to release endorphins in the brain. And it's just as um, tiring as if they went for a three mile hike. Wow. Okay. That's really good to know. So I will say uh, that Beverly was actually barn hunting right yes. before she came tonight. And so obviously barn hunting is for the nose, uh, you know, training for her uh, so they can go out and that's, that's awesome. Okay. Never understood that. That is pretty uh, amazing. Okay. Let's get to the really good stuff. Um, so let me first figure out what are those amazing uh, gadgets um, and products are out there that you don't think pet owners are as familiar with that you use in helping pets. So there's lots of them. Um, probably the most common that I use are, well, I've got different type of tools. So I've got food dispensing and puzzle toys. So I'm always recommending those. Um, oftentimes these guys need to problem solve. Um, I've had several dogs actually in the past couple of weeks with cognitive decline. And so we've talked a lot about food dispensing and puzzle toys to exercise that brain, just kind of like doing some Sudoku, you know, in the human world. Um, so things like a snuffle mat, um, if you guys don't know what that is, um, it's very similar to a rag rug. And I meant to bring one and I forgot to get it, but a snuffle mat is, um, it's, you can make them yourselves if you take like a, some kind of a, a rubber mat um, and it can be a dish mat or a dish strainer um, or a heavier duty mat and some strips of fleece and you just tie a square knot and make it kind of like a like those uh, blankets that they make. Um, okay. And they have to sniff in around them and find the food. Oh, so yeah. yeah, yeah, I was trying to see if my dog brought hers in here. She did not, it's in the hallway. Um, but yeah, so you just sprinkle their food on it and they have to sniff around and look for it. And so that can be something that's fun for them to do. And oh, it helps uh, them. To we've got one down here. Okay. Yep. She's got one. She's holding it up. Oh, there you go. 
Very good. Nice. Do. Okay. So yes. that's a little more than I realized. It's yes. like, oh, oh, it's oh, and Beverly. There we go. We got another one. Excellent. Oh, Beverly. You got his too. That's yeah. amazing. Yes. Very nice. So cats, you can use those for cats as well. Guinea pigs, rabbits. Oh, we don't have our, oh, we do have our guinea pig on tonight. Yay. And see, so you could use, oh, that is so cool. Yes. Be so happy. Yes. So, you, so for the guinea pig, just because I'm now, I'm nosy. Mm -hmm. So what would you put, what would you hide? Is it still just their little food you'd hide? Yeah, their little food in it. That's, I, I don't put anything really special in a stuffle mat. I put their own food in it. <sighs> yep. Yeah. So that's how I feed my dog. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I just, that's mind blowing for me. Yeah. You can put their own food in there. I mean, you could put other things in it too, but you don't have to. Um, we also use them for behavior modification. So like dogs that let's say you've got a dog that might be reactive at the front door. You can use a snuffle mat near the front door and keep a little container of food or treats right there by the door. So when you go to answer the door, you put a little bit in the snuffle mat, you go and answer the door. So it keeps, keeps the dog busy um, while you're doing that. You can yeah, use it. The problem is that darn front door. So that is another mind blower for me this evening. I'm yeah. getting myself a snuffle mat. Yes. Snuffle. Mm -hmm. Snuffle mat. You do have to watch that they're not going to ingest it. You know, that's a big thing. You want to make sure they're not going to eat it. Um, so it's not something I recommend leaving with them unsupervised, but it's a really good tool for just a variety of different things. And many dogs, you know, they really enjoy it. Same thing with cats. So let's say you've got two cats that may not get along very well. You can use a snuffle mat as a feeder as one of the ways that they can eat together. Um, so they're busy snuffling for their food, yet they're in close proximity to each other. So, I mean, it can be helpful for that as well. So snuffle mat is just one of the things. Um, another is a lick it mat or a licky mat. I don't know if you guys have seen these. You guys might have seen these. This is, ah, there we go. I see that. So um, these are great if you have canned food. Um, you can also use yogurt in these or peanut butter. Uh, these are great for vet visits. Um, you know, load them up, put them in a Ziploc bag and put them in the freezer. So um, these are great tools. The other that we have, we have Lick It Bowls. This is a Lick It Bowl, same kind of concept. Um, and then what we have well, also is this one, which is the Lick It Mat Splash. And it's got a nice little suction cup, it's great for bathtubs. So those, those animals that don't like baths, just put this against the wall. They can be licking on this while you're giving them a bath. Or let's say you've got that dog that just goes a little crazy when you go to put the leash on it, stick this on the wall. They can be licking off of this as you're putting that leash on and off. So this is a great, a great tool for a lot of different things. So this is called a Lick It Mat Splash. Hey, Dr. Christine, I have a, a question from in the chat. Um, yes. Elizabeth said that she had always fed her dogs in wobbler Kongs and you're- Yes, excellent. I don't know what those are, so if you could explain that, but she said recently her dog has stopped using it and wondered if she should be worried about that. Oh, well, they do make noise. So I do, you know, so if you've got a dog that's a little cautious of noises, there we go, Shannon has one. Shannon, okay. That's like yeah. huge. I've never, yes. I've never, I know what Kongs are, but I've never heard of the wobbler Kong or the yes. big, that's big The monster. bottom screws off and you put food in it. Okay. And oh, then, in the hole, they have to move it around to get it out. Oh, okay. Yes, you. yes. So it's a great tool. This is another one. This is called a um, Westpaw toy. I don't know how many of you guys have seen these. Um, so this also has a hole in it. So they can, um, food can fall out of it. But you can also pre-stuff it with things and freeze it. They've come in two different sizes. This is the smaller one. And they actually go in together to make it a little more difficult. And so then food can, it can roll around also and food can come out of it. So this is just another, so you can use it separately or together. Oh so my another, God. another good tool that that's out there. Yes. That is brilliant. Look at smart humans figuring this stuff out. That is fantastic. Yes. That is awesome. What well, else I, got over there? I see a buster box, which I don't have one of those, but that's oh, another that's a buster box. Tool. What is that JJ? Hang on, I'll unmute you, Jake. Oh. You got a little, hang on, I'll unmute you. Okay. A puzzle feeder. Nice. You can put food in the little holes or yes. leave them empty and they have to do nose work to find yes. the food. Excellent. And it keeps them busy. Yes, yes. And I know there's lots of different varieties of those. 
So you want to go for the sturdier ones. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's another one. Cats as well. So, um, you know, cats also, you know, they really, so cats are meant to hunt. They have to hunt. They have this instinctive behavior to hunt for food. So giving them things they can hunt for, very helpful when it comes to giving them a variety of uh, enrichment um, and things to do. So there's so many different puzzle toys out there for cats. Okay, I love that. Just don't do those toys at 3 a.m., JJ says, because that will wake you up. But Aunt Ashton, where I don't see her photo right now, she might be buried under my chat. Oh, there she is. Um, she is saying, like, where can we find some of these? So, Ken, I know we've got a lot going on, but let's make sure we're putting out um, some links so that people can uh, grab those, because I think that this is absolutely fantastic. So what are the things, do we have any toys that are non-food driven? Because if you feel like you're constantly feeding your pet, and we know weight can be an issue. Mm -hmm. So that's why you feed them their regular food. Okay. Oh, wait. Okay. So JJ does want to brag on this one. She and I talked about it um, uh, yesterday. So I will unmute um, her here because this is actually good because it has to do with microchipping. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, this is another item that I have. It's a little on the pricey side. It's called Sure Flap. And basically, it's an automatic pet feeder for small dogs or cat. Basically, they do it with you can do it with your microchip or you can do a hang tag. And as the animal puts his head through the feeder, you have to train him to do it. It will open up automatically. I don't know if you guys caught that, but we did. We did. So it's the idea that then the pet can, is only triggered to eat based on their what time it is for them to eat. And if it's there, if you have multiple, it's for a multiple pet household, right? Well, not necessarily on time because with the one cat, he's more of a grazer. So ah. he eats all day, but it prevents his sister from eating his food. Which is really, really yeah. good. <laughs> that's but a great they're on a prescription diet. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's why I got this. Yeah, and that's... it runs off of C batteries. So it's, and it lasts for a long time. That is awesome. Yes. Um, Okay, so let's talk about some other of those 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 toys that actually. Thank you. You too. Oh, sorry. Thank you, honey. Who was thanking their honey? I missed it. Was that you? Christine? Oh, dear God! I'm sorry. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I'm going through the through the car wash. Sorry, they they drive my car really well. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I'm like, I don't see who's doing that. That's really kind of funny. <laughs> I'm muting. I'm muting now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All good. We know. Thank you, honey. At least there's a honey in her life. And that's important um, as we are uh, living our lives these days. I love that. Um, okay. So there are other enrichment toys that like I'm thinking particularly in the car. So let's talk about car safety where I do want to talk about gadgets and gizmos for the car, but is there like for those when they are not necessarily um, like excited about getting in the car? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes, so that's one of the things that you can work on through training and behavior modification. Um, but there are other things in the car. So if I can pull it out, I will. But there's something called a calming cap. Have, has anybody heard of that one? They now call them, I think, thunder caps. But um, I have two different varieties here. But this is a calming cap or a thunder cap as they're so called now. And here's another version of it. This is just a bigger one. Um, and this, what they do is their nose comes through here like this, and this covers their eyes. Oh, so they can't see kind of what potentially mm -hmm. could They be. can still see through it. You know, I always say it's kind of like a, I always tell people it's like a Speedo. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's made with that type of material. You can see through it, just not as, not as well. So like I can still see you all, but just not, it's just a little bit blurred. So a lot of dogs react to fast moving things outside the car. And so if we can blur their vision somewhat, they actually will calm down. So oh. this can be one thing that you can use in the car. They also use this for other things too, like thunderstorms, um, because of the flashing lights from the lightning. Um, they use this at the groomers or the vet hospital. You do have to, I mean, some dogs are not going to naturally be comfortable with this. So you might have to do a little bit of desensitization and counter conditioning to get them comfortable with it. So just kind of introduce it slowly with good things. 
Um, but this can be a, a great tool in the car, especially those dogs that even get car sick because it can be they're getting nauseous from everything moving past very quickly and this can dull their vision so they're not as overstimulated by what's passing them by. That is awesome. What about, how, what's your feeling about car seats? I have one. Yeah, they're safe, they're, that's actually one of the safer ways to uh, transport an animal. They also behind the front seat. Um, so either on the floor of the passenger side or the driver's side is the safest place to put a carrier um, in, in a car um, for these guys. Um, but a seatbelt, and there are some that have been crash tested. Really? Well, I can't, I'll have to remember which one I have, but we got it and it does make it easier for her. We do notice she definitely calms down because she's in a spot that is a little more confined instead of. Right. But she, How it all depends. On seat belts? Like I've got the seat belt that plugs into the seat belt buckle, but it latches onto his harness. Right. Right. So, yeah. So that's one. There are though some that are safer than others. Um, I think Sleepy Pod is the one that I'm thinking off of the top of my head. That's one of the safer ones that's gone through some crash testing. Ooh, um, and so, you know, there, there, there is a website and it escapes me at the moment what the name of that website is. But if you do a search, a Google search, you'll find a website that actually rates uh, different harnesses and crates for okay. the car. Yeah, because I, I think I got mine from Amazon, so mine's probably not the safest because I don't feel safe putting her leash on because she wants to jump out. And so it does. So I, I don't do that. But I will say that. So speaking of safety, let's talk about crates, carriers and gates, mm -hmm. because there are lots of gadgets these days and all those different types of things. What can we know about those? Right. So um, so there are lots of different gadgets. If you have an animal that has some confinement issues, it's actually better not to confine them. Um, an X-Pen is excellent. And I see one, uh, JJ is showing us an X-Pen. Um, so if you guys are familiar with that, they come in different heights. Uh, oh, no, that's a, is that an X-Pen or is that a crate? No, I that's an, I think she has a lid on the top of it. A lid on the top of it. Okay. So it is an X pen. So yes. Yeah, so those are, those are very nice, especially for puppies that you're house training. Um, it gives them a little more space and um, especially in non COVID times, you know, when we actually have to go to work um, so that if they do have some time that they're spending um, alone, it gives them that opportunity to um, have spaces for sleeping and playing and even elimination um, if you desire. So, so an X pen, I like them um, having a top over them. Some of them do need that. Some of them do not. Um, it just really depends on, on that animal, um, but they can be great. Um, also crates, a wire crate um, can be excellent or an airline crate is another. Um, so, you know, both of those are, um, are good to give them a safe spot or a place to kind of get away. Um, and it needs to be a place where they feel comfortable though. Never anxious. They should never be put in there. If they're feeling anxious, it needs to be their safe spot, their safe haven, their, their comfort spot, you know, their relaxation station. So yeah. interesting. Uh, Elizabeth asked the question, is there an age you should start with seatbelts and age for puzzle feeders? What is it like? When do you start? And is there too late of an age? So I started with puzzle feeders. I just had a litter of puppies that we raised and started with puzzle feeders from uh, almost right from the beginning. So three to four weeks. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They're small. We had small ones, but um, yeah. So starting with them younger, it, there's no age limit um, and puppies, they're ideal. You know, puppies like to chew. They like to put their mouth on everything. So giving them something they can chew on is going to be very beneficial in the long run. What about um, an old lady like, you know, who's 12? 12. 12. So older dogs also. So it does help. It has some protective effect, we think, with cognitive decline. So you'll have to start easier with the older dogs if they haven't been, um, haven't used them before. Uh, but definitely they can be beneficial to um, older dogs as well. Oh, I love that. I love that. So I do want to quickly talk a little bit about um, uh leash walking. And so you did mention before that if you've got someone who doesn't like to have their leash on, you know, and I, we, we've had some people ask before, gosh, my dog doesn't like to do that, you know, or people that have also the, where they can do the walk without the leash when the neighbors say you shouldn't do that because that's not allowed. Um, just my own personal, but, um, 
So how can we help them with reacting on the leash? So a front clip harness is a, is a must. So, so a harness that clips in the front and there are many different kinds. You have to find what fits your dog the best. Um, I like the, um, I like the um, new freedom harness, um, but it has a lot of buckles and, you know, it can be confusing sometimes to put on. Um, it clips in the front and the back. Um, also, I like the balance harness. That's another one that I find pretty easy or there's the halty harness or even the rough wear harness. So all of those can be fine. Um, but the biggest thing about it is it needs to clip in the front. You do also have the easy walk harness. Um, I find those tend to um, put a little bit of pressure on the shoulders, which I worry about um, range of motion in the front leg. So I don't tend to use those as much. Um, more of the ones that fit uh, just a little bit closer to the neck area. But if you have control over the front end, you've got control over the dog. So it's, it can really help you um, with dogs that pull, dogs that lunge, you know, help you to, to redirect them um, and move them away rather than towards what it is they're reacting to. Um, so front clip harnesses are ideal. Um, some dogs though um, do well with a head collar. So this is one kind, this is the gentle leader. Most people are familiar with this one. Um, uh, there's other ones that are out there. Um, I have a, um, the perfect pace harness uh, head collar, um, which is kind of like, a, it's one of the things they use for service dogs. Um, it's a thinner material, so it doesn't rub up on the eyes and it has a clip that clips to the collar. So if they're to slip out of it, you know, you still have uh, some kind of something tethered to that dog. Um, there's also the halties. Those can be great for the head collars. Um, you have to introduce those slowly as well. That's not something you can just put on. Um, you can introduce it a different couple of different ways. Uh, one of the ways I really like that's nice and easy is actually to take a Kong with some peanut butter or squeeze cheese in it. And I lay the nose piece over top of the Kong. And as they're licking out of it, I take that nose piece and I put it on their nose and then I take it off and we move it away. And then we bring it back and we do it again. And then eventually we work up uh, to clipping it behind the ears and that can take five or ten minutes but it can also take three weeks you know it just really depends on the dog and their and their comfort levels so um, a head collar works nice um, if you've got a dog that still pulls with that harness or you need a little extra control of the head so we got a couple like there here's the fire hose for you for a couple of questions here uh, what would you recommend as the best chew toy and I don't know if that's dog or cat so let's give both <laughs> well, you know, for dogs, I still like using these over chew toys, but um, sometimes, you know, I will use um, uh, like you can use um, dehydrated sweet potatoes, you know, those can be a good uh, chew toy that you can use. Um, I've had people tell me they've used a coconut. <laughs> not harmful to the dog and they can chew around the outside of it. Um, you can make, um, you can freeze ice cubes. Um, you can make them different shapes with chicken broth. You know, that's another good um, chew toy for these guys as well um, because it gives them that little extra crunch that they may be looking for. But to be honest, what I like is I do like food, these, these puzzle toys that I stuff and then freeze for chew toys. Just to really help them. And again, I, what I think is the message here is making sure you're not getting something that could break up and hurt the pet as, as, and, and become an issue. I've what seen a lot of broken is teeth. considered an older dog? Great question. <laughs> what age is, can, it is. And I think it really depends on the dog. You know, each uh, dogs are going to age differently based upon their genetics, based upon their breed. Um, you know, so it can really vary, you know, larger breed dogs, older dog would be, you know, maybe even five or above, um, whereas your smaller dogs, it could be, you know, nine or 10 or even older. Um, it just really, it really depends. Oh we have God. a couple of, we have a couple of questions um, from our Facebook live. So from um, Danielle, she asks, are there toys to help her three-year-old Westie to lay down? Mm, so that's very interesting. So yes, you can use things like um, a remote treat dispenser. So something like um, the pet tutor, um, something like the treat and train. So this is a remote activated um, treat dispenser, having it near a mat and you can reinforce them or shape them into a lying down and or relaxed 
position. Um, so these are some good tools. Uh, the, the, the pet tutor makes uh, is um, Bluetooth activated, so you can run it with your smartphone. Um, a little pricey, you know, a little bit pricey. The um, treat and train, uh, Sophia Yin invented it, if you guys know who she is, um, and uh, was originally a sharper image product. Um, but it is uh, now um, produced um, through um, PetSafe, although it's not technically a PetSafe product. And it, um, it is a more, it runs on D batteries. So it needs a little, it might need a little bit of, uh, it's got a remote and then you run it on the D batteries and it's got a wheel, but it's very hardy. And a lot of people have used it for many years and it's very dependable product, um, but you can use it for a lot of different things. We use it to teach the down. We also use it for other things too, like teaching them once again to, if somebody rings the doorbell, you can station it in a back room and you can hit the remote and they can be, they can learn to run to the back rather than to the front. If somebody comes to the door, um, we use it for targeting. We use it for a lot of different things. So, um, so remote treat dispensers are a great way um, to teach things like lying down, especially at a distance. Thanks, Dr. Christine. There's another um Question from Facebook, Jenna, Jenna says that the front clip harness creates a clothesline effect and flips her, I'm assuming her dog hard onto her back when she runs full speed after a squirrel. How can, yeah, that doesn't sound how, how can she help prevent that? Since so that's where she might want a head collar. Maybe that would be a little more, give her a little more control. I think it would depend on which front clip harness she's using. Um, she might also want to consider one that has dual clipping, so not just clipping in the front, but also in the back. Uh, that's where the new Freedom Harness is nice because you can have a double leash. So it's kind of like the reins on a horse. So it helps you with some power steering for these guys. So if they go to run, you've got you've got a way to control them um, a little bit better because you've got that dual control over the front and the back. Great. Thanks. And it's got a martingale on the back, too, so they can't slip out of it. Yeah. Well, speaking of leashes, let's talk about how you train a cat to walk on a leash. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get them comfortable with the harness first. <laughs> so uh, lots of treats, a little bit of desensitization, um, you know, and have it be a fun thing. So a fun game to wear that harness um, and then start going outside. And once they realize that outside is a fun place to be, if they enjoy the outside, um, that becomes a reinforcement in itself. So you mentioned pet tutor. What about the manners minder? What the heck is that? Is that the same thing? That's the treat and train. So treat and train and man manners minder are the same thing. They just okay. have different names. Yes, yes. Okay, so aside from kibble, we know we're supposed to be giving them kibble, we know. But what is, we're gonna have a great conversation next week on the best and worst treats. But from a training perspective, what is it that you would have added as remembering that we have a nutritionist coming next week to tell us the best and worst treats? Uh, to me, it really depends on the animal and what they find reinforcing. Like I have a dog that finds carrots very reinforcing. Whereas I have another one that says, no, thank you. You know, they, they need liver or steak or something along those lines. So, I mean, it really depends on the animal and you just have to figure out, you know, what it is that they enjoy. And so it might be a little bit of trial and error and then save your really valuable treats for those harder to teach behaviors. Or if you're working on changing how they feel about things. Whereas the lower value can be used for behaviors they already know or easy behaviors like sit. What is your ultimate favorite out of all the things that you have? And I know there's different issues, right? But what's the one thing you find yourself going to all the time? What's your go-to that you keep in your arsenal as a board certified behaviorist that you're like, this is it? Oh, this the snuffle mat. <laughs> I had never heard of that sucker before. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I have one in the room. So like when they come in, it's already preloaded uh, and then go, they go right. Most dogs go right to it as soon as they walk in the room. So is it, so I do have a question on the snuffle mat. So is it per animal, meaning they each need to have their own? They don't each need to have their own. They can share. They can like, share or would they be, were they part of be like, I'm not going near that. That's Sam's. I don't want Sam's. So you can use it as a tool for behavior modification. So if you're introducing cats or even dogs, it can be 
if you don't have a resource guarding dog, but it can be a, it can be a tool that you can use where they share. Um, but yes, having an individual one for each animal is ideal, oh but if you share and they're comfortable with that, that's okay. Yes. And I love that JJ is becoming Vanna for uh -huh. us. I that's would like to point out JJ does work at a shelter. So that's why she is so armed to the gills with all of it. And I love it. That's what this community is all about is to really help each other out. Uh, but we always want to make sure that we're getting that veterinarian guidance as we're doing it, uh, moving yeah. ahead. So yeah. you guys, I do want to make sure if there's any other questions that we have popping up, this is one of my favorite conversations because we're giving you actual tangible things. Now we're asking you to go spend some money and we apologize for that. Uh, but we do think that it's up for you to figure out what's best for your pet from that perspective. Can we, can we ask a, a question that's not a gadget or gizmo? It's a behavior question, Dr. Christine, do you mind? Sure, go ahead. Um, so Pat said that um, their new rescue has multiple issues, including allergies. And she started acting like she's going to take someone's leg off if she's outside and someone walks by. So any thoughts? So if you go, if you go two down, Elizabeth says cheese and that's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> squeeze cheese, actually. Um, squeeze cheese, carrying a can of squeeze cheese with you with the lid off in your pocket and introducing it every time she sees the trigger. Ideally, you need to do it before they, you should be able to see the trigger first. And if you see it come and get that squeeze cheese out before they react. Um, that's one way to do it. Another is to toss uh, uh, chunks or little chunks of cheese down in front of them or even their own kibble if they're motivating enough by it um, down in front of them, but away from the animal so that they're looking away um, from whatever the, tr whatever the trigger is, which it looks like in this one, it's, it's people. Um, but squeeze cheese is one, um, with allergies, cheese usually is not an issue. Um, peanut butter, even, uh, though it is in people doesn't tend to be as big of an issue in dogs with allergies either, at least according to, to, uh, some of the nutritionists that I've talked to. Um, you can also take their canned food and, um, of whatever diet they might be on and put it into a squeeze tube. So squeeze tube, um, those are, um, you can buy those. Um, they, uh, <laughs> there's a squeeze cheese, JJ has squeeze cheese. Um, you can buy those or you can make them, um, but squeeze tube with their own food and it can be helpful as well. So I just have to make a comment here. I am so excited to see that we've got Sarah over here grooming her cat the whole time. You got Karen doing all the loving and the just cuddling with it. I just think it's awesome. I mean, it's just amazing. And if, if, if the Bridge Club Pets becomes the time that you cuddle with your little, you know, furry friend, I am so excited about that because they deserve all that extra special love as we're having this conversation. So I just, I think it is um, absolutely fantastic. And I love seeing all the animals, by the, I just absolutely adore it. Well, that also can be enrichment too. So the grooming and the brushing uh, that Sarah's doing there, that can be enrichment. Um, so that's, you know, and people time is also enrichment for these animals too. They are social. Most of them are social, um, especially our dogs and even our cats, even though cats can be selectively social, they're still social. Um, and so just one-on-one -on -one time with people um, is enriching in itself. I just find it to be absolutely fantastic. I think uh, just across the board, my husband and I were having a conversation. It's funny, we've now had Lily for 12 years. She really does tell you what she needs if you actually listen. I mean, right. if you really pay attention, and I think the notion of when you're out for a walk, you do need to observe the behavior before your pet does. And I mean, most of us, when we know there's gonna be you know, uh, uh, something ahead, we, we tend to divert, but it's, when, it's the things that we don't know like at five o'clock in the morning and you're walking her and all of a sudden she gets in that alert position and you can't see what's going on. Nothing will freak me out faster uh, to see my dog do that. Uh, so we do have a question about e-collars and citronella collars. Um, so talk to me about that. Yes, so that's a good question. So those are adversives. So they're working on focusing on pain or discomfort. Um, so they're not ideal to use. Um, so that, that can be a hard conversation to have. 
um, when they're using those, especially it looks like in the dog park area, because, you know, these are tools that they have grown dependent on, um, but they are, they're working on corrections and they're not really teaching the animal what you want them to do. They're focusing all, a lot on what you don't want them to do, which can have side effects. So fear and anxiety is often a side effect of aversives um, and it often can make the behavior worse and not better and what's give the, you a false sense of security. What's a citronella color? I would have thought that would have gotten rid of the mosquitoes. It, they use it for barking. Oh, okay. So totally did not know what that was. I was thinking, oh, we're protecting them from mosquitoes. <laughs> no, they use it for barking as part of a bark collar. And yes, it's a little less stressful on the animal than a, than a shock collar, um, but, but it's still an aversive and, um, to, and it could be to that animal. Um, and so finding out why they're barking in the first place is more important. So finding out why that behavior is occurring and then working on that. A lot of people use it for recall. We have a lot of people here in Maine that use them on trails and things like that. But if you really work on your recall, um, you can train an animal or teach an animal to come um, just as a, effectively as, uh, a, as a shot caller, if not better, because they want to come to you. It's not because they have to. So this is a good one because this actually happens per my conversation earlier about people walking without a leash. What mm -hmm. is your recommendation for when a loose dog does come at your dog who is on a leash, what should yes. we be doing? That's challenging because you have no control over that other dog. Um, one thing I always tell people to do is, is carry treats with you and toss them at that dog. Oh. Now that may work in some cases, it may not work in all cases, but it can help to at least get that dog distracted so that you can move away. Um, the other is um, you can also use an umbrella, which you have to be careful because it can be aversive to your dog. But sometimes if you've got a dog charging at you, an umbrella, opening that umbrella can be a great way um, to stop that dog from advancing. Um, and then in a, in a pinch, there's also like citronella sprays that you can use, a spray shield and that kind of thing. But but ultimately, we would hope that the other dog is friendly and just wants to come up and play. Um, and if you toss some treats away from you, that dog will go in that direction. I mean, I think that's just amazing. I think, uh, you guys, this has been awesome. I want to be really conscious of our time tonight. So if you have any last minute questions, throw those into Facebook or throw them into our chat. But I did want to let you know, we've got some incredible conversations coming up the next time that Dr. Christine is with us. So we all know the vaccine is here, not only one, not only two, but we have three vaccines now. And so things mean that we're going to start opening up and our lives are going to be changing. Oh, I just, and, and I should say it. Yay! So things are going to be changing. And this means a lot of an impact on our pets. And so we're really going to be talking about how our behaviors and what's changing and we're so excited about is gonna actually change after a year of being with our pets side by side. So really excited to have her help us prepare them. So that will be coming up. As I mentioned next week, we're gonna talk about all of the good treats and bad treats. And I, my heart is breaking because the treat that I give my dog is equal to a Snickers bar. And I did not know that. So <laughs> I am over here having with, I'm just, so we're going to go through all the good and the bad of the nutrition side. So we're definitely going to be doing that. I did want to make sure you're all also noticing we're going to tackle CBD. So we are, in fact, going to be having a conversation. Oops, there goes my daughter trying to call me. Got to love when that happens. Um, so we are going to be having a conversation specifically on the use of cannabis uh, with your pets. And that will be happening actually, ironically enough, on 420. And for those of you who know, 420 is a very important day in the CBD world. Uh, <laughs> so we will be having that conversation. So we've got a lot of really cool stuff coming up, um, but we want your ideas as well. If you want us tackling something, I had a great conversation with JJ that I have to talk offline with with Dr. Christine about that I really am excited to bring forward as well. Um, so if you have a topic, bring it forward to us. We want to help address your challenges, but also if you're having challenges with it, we know other people are as well. So any other final questions? Okay, uh, what about toys to teach older dogs about how to play as she's never learned in her 11 years? 
Lily so finding Stroll, same easy thing. toys, easy, easy toys, you know, stuffed toys, um, toys with squeakers, you know, just trying some different ones um, and seeing what they're interested in. Um, you can also put something that smells, you know, some kind of scent on it that maybe will entice them to interact with it. Maybe like some peppermint or citronelle or lavender um, that could entice them to get interested in it. And um, and show some, you know, desire to interact with it. Um, also, you playing with it can also um, cause some excitement as well. But if they, you know, if they aren't interested in toys, there are other things that they may find just as reinforcing, if not more, like attention. So finding out what works for your particular dog is important. And they don't have to play with toys if it's something that they don't really enjoy. Is catnip okay inside toys? Catnip is fine. Okay, and then Dr. Cheryl, this might be something you wanna jump in with Dr. Christine. Vaccinations and physicals and the behavior reactions to them. I think that's a topic that uh, somebody's asking us to oh, address. That okay. is a good you know, topic. question. How do you address those behavior reactions? That's, that's one of our first. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's a really good, that's a, that's a big topic. That's just like, I had a puppy this, you know, today at, at, uh, at the hospital for vaccines and if, it, my day is made when I can get a puppy to just focus on treats and not even notice when I'm poking. And then be when they're when I'm all done and the puppy's still eating and then turns around and goes, what'd you do, anything? <laughs> that's the best. They're like, okay, so that's good. I did not realize that, so that's on me. I was too busy making sure we were answering any final questions. Uh, so with that, guys, I really wanna thank Dr. Christine. She's always so great to come back every time and I think she has so much knowledge and tonight, I don't know about you, but I'll be going on Chewy and Amazon later here and buy a bunch of stuff. So that'll be a little busy in PetSmart and Petco and every place that I possibly can. So thank you for all of the recommendations. I also profusely need to thank Kathleen for being on Facebook and Cheryl for helping pass those questions forward. But Dr. Cheryl and Shannon always for being the ones to help us get to the heart of all the questions and answers for all of you. I hope to see you guys all next week, same time, not same bat channel. You always have to register because we always keep changing it for security purposes. That's always very important if you're always wondering. And share us with your friends. We're trying to grow. So everyone, raise your, your glass. And so here's to all the gadgets and gizmos that will be in your in-cart later tonight. <laughs>